Okay, it's all hard. Uh, that's probably going to have some feedback on yours. Um, okay, so we want to go over the uh, updated listing agreement from Florida Realtors. Um, all of our discussions today are related to the legends of real estate. If by chance anyone sees this someplace else, please know um, that these discussions are specifically for the agents of legends of real estate. No antitrust, no anti company, no anti, what's the words I'm looking for? Okay, great. Fair housing? No, um, anti related antitrust items. So anyway, yes, I did. Uh, this is what's in the chat. Okay, so, all right, exclusive right of sale listing agreement. Here we go. All right, the seller, hopefully you know who that is. Maybe you're sitting there talking to them. Maybe you've had a chance to chat with them. Um, just the seller or seller's names, please make sure that they match the deed. Um, some things that we need to kind of remind ourselves. Uh, if it is a trust, it should identify the name of the trust and the trustee. If it is a trust, we do need something in the file that indicates that the individual who is signing has the rights to sign on behalf of the trust. Um, if it's uh, somebody signing as a POA, we would need to note that also based on the individuals who hold um, the deed. So just keep that in mind. Broker is always the legends of real estate. Um, we've had, we've had people ask, well, can I put my name in there? Uh, legends of real estate, my name. I mean, using your name, not my name. I mean, you can use my name. Anyway, um, yes, you can put your name, the legends of real estate, and your name is the listing agent. That's fine. In most of these documents, it's the broker or the authorized licensee that can sign. So you should be good. Um, let's jump into the authority to sell. So the authority to sell, this is really no different from the previous version, but let's just make sure we're all on the same page. Shella gives the broker the exclusive right to sell. We are going to be using the exclusive right of sale listing agreement. I know that you're used to having it say transaction broker or single agent or non-rep. It doesn't say that at the top of these. One of the paragraphs established in the listing agreement will identify that the process is being worked through as a transaction broker that's later in this agreement. When you're looking for it in app files or in um, form simplicity, it will say exclusive right of sale listing agreement and then it will say transaction broker. There's some confusion because the exclusive right of sale listing agreement transaction broker is slightly lower on the list. There's Florida, I think it says FAR, and then down it says FL. So it's under the FL. It's it's You just have to look a little further. This current listing agreement is in all of our listing packages already. It's there now. This. This one is there now. And this is one we use. This is the one we use. Yeah. So this is all there now. Um, the real and personal property collectively called the property described below at the price and terms described below, beginning on a specific date and terminating at 11.59 on another date. Remember, uh, time is of the essence is now defined as up until 11.59 and 59 seconds uh, in, in real time. So it's the communication that, that goes back and forth. Upon full execution of a contract for sale and purchase of the property, all rights and obligations of this agreement will automatically extend through the date of the actual closing of the sales contract. Seller and broker acknowledge that the agreement does not guarantee a sale. The property will be offered to any person without regard to race, color, religion, sex, handicap, familial status, national origin, or any other factor protected by federal, state, or local law. Seller certifies and represents that she, he, it is legally entitled to convey the property and all improvements. So the one thing that's slightly different here in from the NIFAR one is it doesn't identify as execution date. However, what it says is full execution of a contract. So remember, if by chance you are not putting this into MLS within 24 hours of the signature date, remember the signature date, if you're not putting it into MLS, within 24 hours of the signature date, that's the execution date. We need to cover the time period between the execution date and the time that it goes active in MLS. There are two ways to do that. It's either through a waiver of entry or coming soon. The waiver of entry, 
the format of waiver of entry is addressed in the listing agreement. And when we get to that paragraph, paragraph six, we'll talk about what you need to make sure you're covered in that. So um, just to kind of keep you, give, give you a heads up or just a reminder, the terminology is slightly different, but we still need to cover that period. So we're making sure we're covering the MLS rules for 24 hour entrance. All right, description of the property. If there is a question, please take yourself off mute. If I don't see, um, if I don't see it, I apologize, but just I'll try and bring up chat so I can kind of have an idea. But if I miss it, please just take yourself off mute and let me know. A description of property, street address, legal description. If it is a longer legal description, you can add an attachment. If it's multiple parcels that are being sold as one, you might want to add an attachment. Uh, but for the most part, this is fairly similar. Big difference in personal property. Um, and we have created a, an additional form that you can use to, for clarification. The NIFAR, purchase, the NIFAR listing agreement allowed you to discuss different features or personal property in the home that might be staying. This only gives you basically a line and a half. So if you want to have that discussion, sometimes it's a good discussion to have with a seller at the onset of the listing to discuss what they intend on leaving in the home, whether it's attached or hanging or leaving as a personal property item, because sometimes it gets muddled in the negotiation later and having that discussion can always help in the negotiations and to move negotiation to uh, pertinent terms and conditions. Uh, now, of course, a personal property item can be a, a term or condition that is relatively emotional for someone. So just having those discussions is fairly, is important. Um, we have a, we'll share it with you when we finalized it, the personal property sheet that will take you through and allow you to discuss the personal property with your seller. And that way you'll be more defined and that would be the attachment that you would see or identify here in your listing agreement. Questions on that? That is a major. Can that go into the document section of MLS? No, the, uh, wait, personal property? Sure, that can, okay. yes. Thank you. So we, we could go down like wall mounts for TVs and Gregory Brights and all like right. that. Those all have to be put in here. Um, those should be put in here. Right. We've created a sheet that we can check them off and they can right. sign. And that's part of our listing package. It will be part of the listing package. We'll send them to you separately so you can review it. If there's something that you think we need to add, then you can let us know so we can add it. But yeah, that, that's a form that we'll be offering out to our agents. Um, Evelyn, I'm sorry, did you have a question? No, I'm fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, occupancy. Property is or is not currently occupied by tenant. If occupied, the lease term expires. So this jumps right into occupancy as it relates to lease. This does not identify whether or not the personal or the property that you're listing is their personal or their primary residence or not. That was in the NIFAR listing agreement. It is not in this listing agreement. Is it important? Yes, it's important. However, it will be determined at title when title is bold. Um, if you want to add it to uh, paragraph 14, the additional terms here, absolutely, please do that. Anything to make sure that you're feeling comfortable and your seller's feeling comfortable and that you feel that you understand how this process is going to work best uh, for both you and the seller. Price and terms. It's slightly different on this one. Um, price and terms, it, very similar to the previous Florida Realtor listing agreement, slightly different from the NEFAR listing agreement. And then there's been an update to the price and terms. So the property is offered for sale on the following terms or on other terms acceptable to the seller. So that will be a specific price. Financing terms, cash, conventional, VA, FHA, other. This would be if the seller is offering financing, you can identify that here. The seller will hold a purchase money mortgage in the amount of with the following terms. Is there any assumption? The buyer may assume a system assume existing mortgage for plus an assumption fee. So that's a little new, the assumption fee. The mortgage is for a term of X number of years, beginning with at an interest rate of, is it fixed or variable? So this would be all the information related to seller financing that was previously done in an addendum. There is a writer for seller financing also. I'm sorry, Teresa. Um, 
Then we go into two, extensive regulations affect the seller finance transactions. It is beyond the scope of the real estate licensee's authority to determine whether the terms of your seller financing agreement comply with all applicable law or whether you must be registered and or licensed as a loan originator before offering seller financing. You are advised to consult with a legal or mortgage professional to make this, this determination. So just putting everybody on notice, especially a seller, that if they um, if they are offering financing, there are gonna be things that they have to do. Hold on one second, let me just make sure. All right. This piece is different. So the Florida Realtor uh, listing agreement had a space on seller expenses that was identified as a percentage that the seller could offer. So the seller expenses, seller will pay mortgage discount, other closing costs or concessions not to exceed. It is now identified as a dollar amount. So that is a change. It was percentage. It's now a dollar amount and any other expenses the seller agrees to pay in connection with the transaction. Let's clarify here for a minute, please. Concessions and compensation must be identified separately. So if a seller is willing to offer concessions, these are concessions or monies towards closing costs like points, um, down payments, any of the other buyer identified closing costs, not compensation. Compensation is identified in the compensation agreement or, and you'll see in paragraph eight, nine, and 10, 10 of this agreement for compensation. These are concessions as a dollar amount. It's identified as dollars because they're, they're trying to help us understand that if it were a percentage, it could be misconstrued as compensation versus monetary amounts towards um, concessions. Go ahead, Missy. Oh, there we are. Back up to the, this must be a dollar. Why? Why can it not be zero? Oh, it can be. Absolutely, it can be. There's oh, okay. I thought I heard you say this must be a dollar. No, 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 it, it would, it must, if they are choosing, let me clarify, thank you. If the seller is electing to offer concessions in any way, shape or form, the concessions are to be identified as a dollar amount. Missy is absolutely correct. The dollar amount can be zero. The seller has no obligation to offer concessions, nor do they have an obligation to offer any amount towards compensation. So if they wanted to put a home warranty in there going forward, they would put the dollar amount up to, let's say, $600 for like a home warranty and discuss that in, in another area. Yeah, so you could put concessions six, up to $600, concessions $1,000. So, and, and remember, this is the listing agreement. So this is the discussions that you're having with the seller at the time of putting yeah. the property on yeah. A seller may say at the time of putting the property on the market, I have no intention of offering concessions. And then when the offer comes in, there may be negotiation that occurs that allows them to offer concessions. It doesn't negate that. This is the preparation for what Very they can good. expect Thank down you. the line. Thank you. So an amendment can override that. Excuse me? An amendment can override that. You don't even have to amend it. If it's, if it's in a negotiation. Now, the question was, so an amendment could override the amount that the seller would like to offer in concessions. The answer is yes and no. If the seller chooses to offer an amount towards concessions, so let's say at the time of listing, the seller says, I really have no desire to offer concessions. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're two weeks into the listing, the seller says, well, what would you recommend as a way to incentivize buyers? And you say, well, it might be a great idea to offer a couple of thousand dollars towards points. You can then amend the, or modify, excuse me, the, it's a modify, modification to the listing agreement. You can modify the listing agreement to include $2,000 in concessions and then market that in MLS. Concessions can be marketed in MLS, compensation cannot, yeah. right? If by chance, so in that scenario, you could modify the listing agreement. If you're getting down to getting an offer and the offer comes in and the, 
buyer is asking for $2,000 towards buyer's closing costs or $2,000 towards concessions, that's a negotiation element that didn't need to be adjusted in the listing. Yeah. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah, right. Is there a cap? There is not necessarily a cap on the amount of concessions, except if, of course, the buyer is using financing. It's 4% for VA, 6% for FHA and FHA. Other sales. Other sales. Uh, Absolutely. Last statement, 4%. Seller can contribute up to 4% towards buyer closing costs for VA, 6% for FHA and convention. Very good. Um, and conventional is, uh, conventional actually changes at 6% if a buyer is putting down more than 10% and 3% if they're putting down yeah. less. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just wanted to kind of bring that up. It used to be identified as a percentage or if the seller was going to be offering or at the onset of the listing was interested in offering concessions, in the previous Florida Realtor listing agreement, it was identified as a percentage. It's now being identified as a dollar amount if the seller would like. Zero is fine, not a problem. Are we okay there? Anything else we wanna throw out or up? Yeah. Broker obligations. So the broker agrees to make diligent and continued efforts to sell the property in accordance with this agreement until the sales contract is pending on the property. This includes, I'm going to remove this for a second. This includes cooperating, communicating with other brokers and making the property available. Notice it says this includes, except when not in seller's best interests, cooperating and communicating with other brokers and making the property available for showings. What would be an instance not in best interest of this one? I honestly don't know. Okay. Now, do all can anybody? Here? Somebody without pre-approval, if they wanted to be that restricted. So the comment was made possibly somebody without a pre-approval or pre-qualification letter. It may not be in their best interest to work. This is related to communicating with other brokers. Um, so it, that could possibly be it if there's an identifying, if there's an identifying. If anybody has something to throw out about when it might not be in the seller's best interest, um, I, to me, that almost relates back to um, representation but oh, that's why um, it's but you know it even transaction brokers have obligations mm -hmm. back to the seller so yeah you know, I, I can't think of anything off the top uh -huh. of my head when it's not in their best interest to communicate with others and this of course is leading to the communication that has to occur if there's compensation being offered in the hopes of cooperating because remember MLS has been cooperation and compensation MLS will now be so will it's one of its tenants, one of its key tenants will be cooperation in addition to all the other things it's provided. A domestic situation whereby he she does she does not want him to cut the attic in the house. I'm sorry, repeat that please, Bonnie. A domestic situation whereby she said, I don't want him back in the house. I can't afford him back in the house. That would be my thought on that. Okay. Reason not to cooperate. Huh, Where she okay. does, some, a seller oh, does okay. not so someone if, back in the house. Yeah. If, if someone's concerned about an yeah, individual, yeah. an individual who's being represented by another agent. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Our rich, yeah. But okay, thank you. Hopefully, we run do not run into that. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. All right. So moving on to multiple listing service, placing the property in multiple listing service, the MLS is beneficial to the seller because the property will be exposed to a large number of potential buyers. As an MLS participant, broker is obligated to enter the property into the MLS within one business day of marketing the property to the public. See paragraph 6A, we're getting there. Or as necessary to comply with local MLS rules. That is our local MLS rule. The listing will be published accordingly in the MLS unless the seller directs the broker otherwise in writing, paragraph six, Seller authorizes broker to report to the MLS this listing information and price terms and financing information on any resulting sale for use by authorized board association members and the MLS participants and subscribers unless seller directs the broker otherwise in writing. 
pretty similar to what it was in the NEFAR and the previous Florida Realtor okay. one. Yeah. All right, so now we're going on to- uh, But everybody has to sign the pages. Everyone has to initial page. Initial the page. Initial each page, correct. All right, broker authority. So here we're gonna do some of our responsibilities. Seller authorizes the broker to market the property to the public unless limited in paragraph 6B1 or 6BI below. Public marketing includes, but is not limited to flyers, yard signs, digital marketing, or digital marketing on public facing websites, brokerage website displays, IDX or VAL, email blasts, multi-brokerage listings, sharing networks, and applications available to the general public. Public marketing also includes marketing the property to real estate agents outside a broker's office. That's in bold. So remember that, we'll get to that in a second. Place appropriate transaction signs on the property except in paragraph 6B1 is if, if paragraph 6B1 is checked below. Use the seller's name in connection with marketing or advertising the property. And then the question is, display the property on the internet except the street address. This has been confusing because we had the choice in the NEFAR one, display the address, do not display the address. And so I think when we're going through these quickly, do not check the box unless the seller does not want the street address displayed, right? So Say that again. do yeah. not check the box unless the seller does not want the street address displayed. So mm -hmm. personal preference, but here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, yeah, but you know, I, how easy is it to get an address off of Google? I mean, or Safari or you know, any ways or any of those other kinds of, of software. But so, I guess if someone's really sort of blasting out information on social media or something like that, then maybe well, so what this is referencing, what the comment was, maybe someone, maybe a seller does not want their address out on public meet on uh, social media. This is referencing the address in MLS. Display the property on the internet except the address. You have to. So I guess it actually would it to the sites it pushes out to. But here's the challenge. Here is first. If the seller does not want this, the address displayed, there are gonna be websites that don't take it. You've heard me say this over yeah. and over again. There are gonna be websites that won't take it because there are websites that won't remove the address. Second, if it is the desire of your seller not to have their address displayed, when you enter the listing in MLS, you must change the broker distribution. And I can't tell you how many times I've seen Seller does not want street address. And then I go check the MLS to make sure that you've checked the box that says, do not display address and the box is not checked. If the box is not checked in MLS when you enter the listing under broker distribution, the property will be out there with the address. So that's why this is only display or check the box if they don't want the address because the address automatically gets shared unless you tell the system, MLS, not to display the address. So if you check the box, it means they don't want it displayed. If your seller asks you not to display their address on the internet, and this box is checked, when you put the listing in MLS, you must go to broker distribution and change, check the box in broker distribution that says, do not display address. Okay, but on this one where it says display the property on the internet except this street address. Okay, except street address. Right. All right, you don't necessarily check that. But if you do check it, you have to change the the brokerage distribution. You have to change distribution in MLS. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's where we've been missing the beat. Okay. Is the seller says, please don't put the address out there. We say, absolutely, we'll do our best not to. We forget to go in and check the box. In, but in if you MLS. do that, you're limiting the amount of distribution to different sites that will not take it unless the address is safe. You are potentially okay. limiting the yeah. distribution. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right, so 6B, not publicly market pub to the public 
seller opt out. So remember I said there were two ways to cover the time period between when someone signs the listing agreement and when you start your marketing. The marketing really starts with the date that's on page one. So if the seller, if there's that time frame, there's coming soon, which of course means it goes into MLS, but does not go out onto the internet. Or the seller, you can have what's called a waiver of entry. In other words, I'm not going to put it into MLS. I'm not going to put it into MLS until we get the, the yard done. I'm not going to put it into MLS until we get something painted on the inside. Then I'm going to put it into MLS. It's going to go active right away. I'm not going to put it into MLS until I get my pictures done. The seller does not authorize the broker to display the property on the MLS. So if 6B1 is chosen, then you would complete the seller waiver of entry. Remember, that still exists. It's still out there. So you would complete the seller waiver of entry. The seller then understands and acknowledges that if the seller checks box 6B1, a forced sale will not be placed upon the property. So in other words, the rules of waiver of entry are no signs, no public marketing, no social media, remember? Seller waiver of entry, no signs, no public marketing, no social media. No signs. If it's in a waiver of entry. A waiver of the not waiver of entry. Okay. Okay. Waiver of entry, no signs in the yard, no public marketing, no social media. So if they choose to do the seller waiver of entry, this puts them on notice and they understand and acknowledge that if the seller checks box 6B1, that the broker will be limited to marketing the property only to agents within the broker's office. Only to agents within the broker's office. Reference back up to 6A2, public marketing also includes marketing the property to real estate agents outside the broker's office. If you and your seller have agreed to a seller waiver of entry, the only people you can talk to are the people in our brokerage about that listing. Okay, that's cool. <laughs> when you use coming soon, that's cool. No, that's waiver of entry, waiver of entry. Yeah. not coming soon. And then okay. you can do coming soon after that if you want, or you can go right to act, whichever okay. you want. So how do we negate a waiver, waiver of entry? Publicly marketed. The minute you put a property into MLS as active, that negates the waiver of entry. The minute you post anything on social media, it negates the waiver of entry. Right? Gotcha. So you don't have to do anything special to negate the waiver of entry. You just have to make sure that you know the rules of the waiver of entry. So again, only to brokers within the oh, excuse me, only the agents within the brokerage can the market can the property be marketed until you go active. Right. That can work. The only other thing that we need here is the waiver of entry. So if you have this, we'll be asking for the waiver of entry uh, form signed by the seller. And that, please remember on the waiver of entry, yeah, the waiver of entry needs to be initialed by sellers, yourself, and us. Yes, Jessica. If we have coming soon, we can put sign yard and market on social media in that form protects us if we're not going active during the coming soon period. Coming soon. So the, the we don't question, need to sell a waiver of entry with a coming soon. It's one or the other. Well, so if the you're, question if you're using that. If you're using coming soon. If you're going to use coming soon, remember the, the rules of coming soon are that it can be it goes into MLS. It does not go into IDX distribution. So it doesn't go to any other websites. Only people who see it are the realtors. It does not go out in subscriptions that you've created. The only way for it to go to a, a consumer is for the agent to share it. You can get potentially a seven day extension uh, by contacting MLS. Within coming soon or when your property is being held as coming soon or marketed as coming soon within MLS, you can put signs in the yard. You can publicly market it. You just cannot show the property or accept an offer on the property. So if someone sends an offer to you while the property is coming soon, you have to go back to the seller and say, we have an offer. Do you want to see it? Do you not? If we want to see it, we have to move the property to active. If you don't want to see it, you want to wait till we go active, we'll wait till we go active, whatever the seller wants. So coming soon, 
just no showings. Um, waiver of entry, you can have showings, but it would only be from bro from agents within the brokerage. Is it one or the other? No, I don't know what your marketing strategy is. Remember, coming soon can only be done for two weeks, maybe three. So if it's going to take, if you lock up the listing and it's going to take a month for them to finish the improvements that they're doing to get the house on the market, then you may want to do a waiver of entry and a week before they're done or when you're when they're done and you get your pictures, then you do coming soon. So they're not mutually exclusive. They just have to be used in the right way to get. Yes, they can be signed at the same time. Great. All right. Um, 6B, there, so this is the waiver of entry. Now we're on to 6C, obtain information relating. So this is what the seller is authorizing us to do, obtain information relating to the present mortgages, mortgage or mortgages on the property, provide objective comparative market analysis information to potential buyers. E, check if applicable. Use a lockbox. If you're going to use a lockbox, we do require that you use the lockbox addendum. Um, a lockbox does not ensure the property's security. Seller is advised to secure or remove valuables. Seller agrees to the notice of the lockbox. And then here, this is slightly, it, well, it's very similar, but withhold verbal offers, withhold all offers once the seller accepts a sales contract for the property. So you, do you have to check both of those? No. Do you have to check one or the other? You can. Depends on what you and the seller have decided. How they want to deal with verbal offers and how they want to deal with offers after they're under contract. Right here, F, notice, we're acting as a transaction broker. So here's the notice that indicates this form is being uh, completed as a transaction broker. Virtual office websites. Some real estate brokerages offer real estate brokerage services online. These websites are referred to as virtual office websites, an automated estimate of market value, <clears throat> or reviews and comments about a property may be displayed in conjunction with a property on some vows. Anyone who registers on a vow may gain access to such automated valuations or comments and reviews about the property displayed on a vow. Unless limited below, a vow may display automated valuations or comments and reviews about the property. So you, we previously had seller does or does not want, does or does not want, it's just does not now. So if they don't want um, an AVM to display or if they don't want someone to be able to write comments, then you check the box. It's only does not. Give um, an example, please. Sure. So an automated valuation model, the most common one. Excuse me? Zillow. Zillow, the Zestimate in Zillow. Um, or the RVM okay. in uh, at, um, RPR, the RPR RVM. Those are both automated valuations. They're based on algorithms. Okay. So those display, if the seller does not want those display, they would check, you would check the box next to the first. What option. do most people do? Well, then, then let's go back into that. So some sites will not take the listing if you do not allow for an AVM. And if you do not want an AVM, you have to go into broker distribution and check the box that says do not display an AVM for the sites that are able to remove. Same thing can be said for comments. So comments um, are, or these are comments related to the website, not necessarily blogging, but comments related to websites, individuals who view properties, in most cases can make comments about a property that they've seen. What I usually remind people is, just try getting to the section of writing comments. In most websites, it's fairly deep in there. So someone's gonna really wanna make a comment. Yeah. If you are or your seller is concerned about comments about a property or their property being made, you can set up a Google alert so that if anything is, any comment is made about their property, you get an alert if that's a concern. But remember both AVM and comments, if one and or both of those are identified as do not do, have you have to change broker distribution and there are sites that will not take that listing. So therefore you're now again, diminishing your market. In, in your estimation and what you see, how many people would check those boxes? I rarely, we rarely have sellers say they don't want an AVM. That's right. We have had recent, we have had a lot of sellers say we don't want comments. 
And, and I think that's where we have to take the lead with them and say, let's talk about why you don't want comments. Let's talk about what the, re the, res the responsibility that I have to you is, and then what removing comments does and does not do for you. And then if they don't want them, absolutely check the box, but go into broker distribution. That's the step that we've been, a lot of us have been missing. They say they don't, and then we forget to go to broker distribution in MLS to make sure that it doesn't exist or that MLS knows, sorry. Any further questions on that from anybody online? You may have to unmute yourself if you do. So this would remove their marketing. So or this would. Yet to remove. No, they still go out to, they're still a part of IDX. It's just that those sites that can remove the AVM will continue to take the listing. The sites that cannot remove the AVM or comments will not take the listing. We get into seller obligations. Is it okay to move forward, everybody? Looking to see if there's a chat that I'm missing. No, all right. Um, seller obligations. In consideration of the broker's obligations, the seller agrees to cooperate with the broker in carrying out the purpose of this agreement, including referring immediately to the broker all inquiries regarding the property transfer, whether by purchase or any other means of transfer. Recognize the broker may be subject to additional MLS obligations and potential penalties for failure to comply with them. Provide broker with keys to the property and make the property available to the broker to show during reasonable times. Inform the broker before leasing, mortgaging, or otherwise encumbering the property. Uh, this does include uh, home equity lines of credit. Indemnify broker and hold broker harmless from losses, damages, costs, and expenses of any nature, including attorney's fees and from liability to any person that the broker incurs because of the seller's negligence, representations, misrepresentations, actions, or inactions, the use of a lockbox, or the existence of undisclosed material facts about the property. This clause will survive the broker's performance and the transfer of title. Very similar to the NEPAR and the previous uh, Florida Realtor. Perform any act reasonably necessary to comply with FERPTA. Make all legal required disclosures, including the facts that materially affect the property's value and are not readily observable or known by the buyer. Seller certifies and represents that the seller knows of no such material facts, local governmental building code violations, unobservable defects, etc. Other than the following, the seller will immediately inform the broker of any material facts that arise after signing this agreement. Consult in appropriate consult in appropriate consult appropriate professionals for related uh, legal, tax, property condition, environmental, foreign reporting requirements, and other specialized advice. So very similar, uh, really no major changes in there from the previous Florida Realtor one, and very similar to the NEFAR one. All right, compensation. Remember, compensation concessions separate. Compensation. So the way this, the paragraphs are organized, you kind of got to have the conversation with the seller before filling out this section. So the seller will compensate the broker as specified below. If a buyer is procured who is ready, willing, and able to purchase the property or any interest in the property on the terms of this agreement or any other terms acceptable to the seller, the seller will pay the broker as follows. A, a certain percentage of the total purchase price plus a dollar amount or a dollar amount, no later than the date of closing specified in the sales contract. However, closing is not a prerequisite for the broker's fee to be earned. Then we go on to a dollar or a percentage of the consideration paid for an option at the time an option is created. We then have a dollar amount or a percentage of the gross lease value if a lease occurs. And then the broker's fee is due following circumstances. If any interest in the property is transferred, whether by sale, lease, exchange, governmental action, bankruptcy, or any other means of transfer, regardless of whether the buyer is secured by the seller, broker, or any other person. Also, under the following circumstances, if the seller refuses or fails to sign 
an offer at the price and terms stated in this agreement, defaults on an executed sales contract, or agrees with a buyer to cancel an executed sales contract. Three, if within a certain number of days after the termination, which is identified as a protection period, the seller transfers or contracts to transfer the property to any in, uh, or any interest in the property to any prospects with whom the seller, broker, or any other real estate licensee communicated regarding the property before the termination date. However, no fee will be due to the broker if the property is relisted after the termination date and sold through another broker. E, retain deposits. As consideration of the broker's services, the broker is entitled to receive a percentage of all deposits that the seller retains as liquidated damages for a buyer's default in a transaction, not to exceed paragraph 8A fee. Compensation. So this paragraph is identified as what the seller is paying the listing broker. Gravity doesn't describe. Say what, Maggie? Oh, sorry. I thought I was on mute. Sorry. Um, and the reason I say that the paragraphs are a little out of order that you have to have the discussion is because if the seller would like to move forward in a more traditional manner and say, I want to, I want to pay you a certain percentage and I want to, I want, I just want you to deal with the buyer's broker and I'm, I'm willing to do up to this amount or this amount. If everything is flowing through the listing broker, the amount in A would be the total amount, the amount they're paying the listing brokerage and the amount they're paying the buyer's brokerage. So if they're, if the, if the transaction is, if the listing is moving forward in a similar manner to what we are experiencing currently, where the seller pays a lump sum of money and that money is paid through the listing brokerage out to the buyer's brokerage, that total amount goes in A. For example, if the seller agrees to pay the listing brokerage 3% and is offering the buyer brokerage 3%, A would be 6%. If the seller is saying, I only want to work with you right now, we'll deal with the buyer brokerage later, then in that example, A would be 3%. If they are not offering compensation to the buyer's brokerage. The question was if they're not offering compensation to the buyer's brokerage. No. If the seller says, I will negotiate with you, this is what I will pay you the listing brokerage. That amount only goes into A. Even if during the conversation, the seller says, I am willing to pay a buyer's brokerage, that I will be happy to do that. I just don't wanna define that now, or I'll define that as 2% now, and I will take care of that at the closing. Clark? It's all funny, it's all funny money, but you know, oh. I mean, it's, it's it'll show up on the thing. So it's, it's whether the seller wants to have everything flow through the notice the compensation agreements. Remember the compensation agreements? There's two seller's broker to buyer's broker, and then seller to buyer's broker. Karen just popped up. Now, Karen, I don't know if you had a question. And I, I do. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so if the seller wants to be traditional, you said the full amount for the buying agent and the selling agent would go, for example, 6%. But if they want to only deal with the listing agent's fee, you could put that there too. How does it know, how does anyone know what you intended? So, and that's why, that's why the, let's get the to that. Let's, let's, scoot, let's scoot on down so you can see, and maybe that'll help. Um, Let's yes, move. I Let's see. And number 10. So, yeah. yeah, they should have put 10 before 8. If only the world would listen to us. Anyway. I <laughs> okay, I understand. 
All right. So let's let's move down and then let, let's finish nine and ten and then maybe we can get some of the questions answered. So I did forget F on compensation. Brokerage commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable. Right. That of means course. before, after, and during. <laughs> Nine is the notice to the seller regarding, see, I kind of feel like this one should have come first, but notice to seller regarding broker, buyer brokers. The buyer's broker, even if compensated by the seller or broker, will, be, will provide services for the buyer. The seller is advised and is aware that the seller may, but is not required to, compensate a buyer's broker upon closing. The seller may choose to enter into a separate written agreement to pay the buyer's broker or may approve broker to pay buyer's broker in accordance with paragraph 10. Seller also understands, A, buyer's broker may include this broker if the broker also works with the buyer on this transaction. B, if this occurs during the duration of the listing, broker will be entitled to the compensation in paragraph eight for services performed for the seller, as well as the buyer's broker compensation in paragraph 10A for services performed for the buyer. The seller should therefore take this into consideration when negotiating compensation and broker may receive separate compensation from buyer for services rendered to buyer by broker. Before before we lose our, our shit, let's <laughs> go ahead and go to 10 and cover the rest of compensation. So compensation to buyer's broker. The brokerage commissions are not set by law and are fully negotiable. The seller approves the following. Check all that apply. If no option is checked, then option C is deemed to be selected. A. Seller authorizes the broker to offer compensation to buyer's broker in the amount of blank percent of the purchase price or flat dollar amount. The amount will be paid from broker to buyer's broker from the compensation amount agreed in paragraph eight. This compensation will be set forth in a separate written agreement between the broker and the buyer's broker. So if you want to write next to A, compensation agreement, seller's broker to buyer's broker. That's the, the reference it's making. Option B, the seller authorizes the broker to offer compensation to buyer's broker from seller, from seller in the amount of X percent of the purchase price or a dollar amount. This compensation will be set forth in a separate written agreement between the seller and the buyer's broker. So if now you want to write next to B, compensation agreement, seller to buyer's broker. Option C, no compensation will be offered to buyer's broker. Notice this is the default. If A or B are not selected, this is the default that the seller will not offer compensation to the buyer's broker. Go ahead, Missy. So how is this going to reflect on the closing statement? <laughs> the difference between A and B? I think personally, I think it's funny money. So I think it will appear just like it currently appears since the credits and debits are buyer and seller. Um, <laughs> And currently, it doesn't reflect that the money is flowing through the brokerage. I don't know that there will be much of a change, but uh, I haven't spoken with the title company to find out if they're changing okay. if its closing disclosure will work. Okay. Thanks. Hey, Clark, um, repeat um, what we should, um, the little note we should put down on 10A. I know 10B is seller to buyer broker. Uh-huh. So there are two compensation agreements. Thanks for the clarification. There are two compensation agreements that currently exist. And notice both A and B reference the compensation will be set forth in a separate written agreement. The separate written agreement that you would use for A is the compensation agreement, seller broker to buyer's broker, seller's broker to buyer's broker. 
The compensation agreement that you would use with B is the compensation agreement seller to buyer's broker. So why would those be different? Why would you go through the brokerages like we normally do and the seller? Oh, that's because they haven't put any compensation in for the buyer's broker in their original listing agreement, right? Potentially. I mean, they're... A, a seller could say to you that they just, look, I've done this 17 times and I just want it done the way that it was done. And that's going to be the compensation that goes from seller's broker to buyer's broker. Correct. Because of the essence of, of transparency and the desire for transparency, the language is being written in an attempt to ensure that the seller understands they have the greatest amount of flexibility in negotiation. So what the verbiage is trying to tell the seller is seller here's the deal this is what i charge you done now what do you think about the buy side you used to be willing to offer compensation sometimes you are sometimes you're not but remember compensation is always negotiable so right now even if the seller says i will offer under a or b i will offer three percent to the buyer's broker once they get the offer, that can all change. That's why there's modifications to the compensation agreements. Why wouldn't someone just do it the way that they're doing? Option A, and then the total amount would be an eight. Right. Because they want to have more negotiation opportunities. Because they want could to it, see it broken out. One, could, one could second. It, yeah. I'm sorry. Could we it be? Me. Yeah. Could it be because the seller's actually going to bring that money to closing? It would still they show don't have enough like you said before, would still show as a debit and a credit. So I don't know if it would be a, if they would unless they don't want it on the closing statement and want to write a personal check for it, potentially. Yeah. I suppose. So how would you one second. Leanne, you had your hand up. I lowered it. You answered it when you during your last explanation. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Sorry, so go ahead. Going back to eight and putting your compensation up there for both sides, uh, if if it would be number A under 10, then it you would put both sides up there. But if they mark number B, then you would only put the listing agent's compensation there. Perfect. Absolutely. And so then it's up in the air of what they'll do. It's always up in the air what they'll do. Right. Other than the listing broker side that right. you've established. Right. So uh, in case you didn't hear that, Holly was saying, if on if on 10, the seller decides that they're comfortable with A, then the amount in 8A here would be the total compensation. Right here. If the seller said, I'll deal with this on my own, B, then the compensation in A or following would be only the listing brokerage compensation. Can the seller select, because it says check all that apply, can the seller select B and C or A and C? Absolutely. That would be saying, I don't want it to publicly state any compensation. I am willing to offer, but I don't want it notified. The response then, if someone calls you, would be, they're not offering compensation at this time. Okay. So a seller could choose A and C, or a seller could choose B and C. If they were doing that, they would be telling you, I have the intention of offering buyer brokerage compensation, but I do not want it marketed as compensation available. So you would, when, a, when another agent calls you about, is the seller willing to, you can say, they would be willing to, but at this time they're not offering compensation. 
please include that in your offer. Yeah. Clark, could you say that one more time? I'm sorry. Sure. Back from the A and C and B and C portion or from where? No, the last one where they're willing but not certain they want to commit to brokers, age buyers, agent compensation. Sure. So put it so, in your offer. So if you're if you're working with a buyer and you call me and say, is the seller offering compensation? And the seller that I'm working with has selected B and C. I would say to you, the seller has communicated with me that they may be interested in offering compensation to the buyer's broker, but at this time, there is no set commission. Please request or please provide, have your buyer request any compensation in their offer. And that is not done on the offer though. What is it done? What form accomplishes that? The compensation agreement. Oh, would, right. The compensation agreement would do that. But uh, I'm gonna say, I would probably recommend putting it in the seller costs and using the compensation agreement or in the additional terms and conditions of the purchase and sale of uh, the contract for sale and purchase and the compensation agreement. I mean, you really don't want it missed. Okay. Hey, Clark. Yes, ma'am. I apologize for a screaming baby at times. Um, what was I? Oh my gosh, I just lost my train of thought. Um, I apologize if you've said this. Is a compensation agreement necessary at all times? Required, I should say. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Is it the brokerage is requiring a compensation agreement? Our brokerage okay, the, is requiring a compensation agreement. Let me let me say that. The legends is requiring it. Yes. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. We have included it in all listing and purchase and sale agreement packages. One, it's in the listing packages. We realize you're going to use one and not the other in most cases, but so that you're prepared to share with the inquiring agent on compensation on the buy side it's there so that you can supply it as part of your offer. are we okay i guess that's a relative term so we signed a listing agreement but we also have the buyer brokerage to buyer brokerage agreement okay not the buyer brokerage agreement i'm sorry it's compensation sorry. agreement there's the, so you would have the, the listing, agreement. yeah, the listing agreement. So our listing packages pretty much should have everything in them now. We realize it's gonna be challenging. If you can think to please use the forms packages that we have put together, we'd really appreciate it. Um, we've had a, a couple of situations where people have gone to grab forms and they've grabbed old forms. We've had a couple of situations where we're missing forms. So the forms package, you probably look at the forms package and go, there's way too much stuff in here for me. And I get it, I get it. But please just go in there and, and you can split out the forms you end up not using. Um, but this is the only way for us to ensure that we have the most recent forms being used uh, is if you use the forms packages. And it is one of the things that we've heard from Florida Realtors Legal, NAR Legal, is you have to use the most recent forms. Um, and, and I know this is a lot. And the reason that we keep emphasizing some of these elements is because it impacts, your actions impact not only you with these changes, they impact the brokerage and then they can impact the board. So it, it, it kind of goes uphill this way. Um, so that's why we're really pushing to please use the forms packages. Um, brokerage relationship, broker will act as a transaction broker, deal honestly and fairly. So the elements of, of defined transaction brokerage relationship. Conditional termination. At seller's request, broker may agree to conditionally terminate this agreement. If broker agrees to conditional termination, seller must sign a withdrawal agreement 
reimburse broker for all direct expenses incurred in marketing the property and pay a cancellation fee of a particular dollar amount plus applicable sales tax. Broker may void the conditional termination and seller will pay the fee stated in paragraph 8A less the cancellation fee if the seller transfers or contracts to transfer the property to any in, uh, or any interest in the property during the time period from the date of conditional termination to the termination date and protection period, if applicable. So the previous uh, period was a year. Um, we've been working with 90 days, but this is saying this is the conditional termination. Dispute and a reasonable fee. Yeah, we. I mean, I'm trying to figure out what a reasonable fee would be. That we, we'll probably end up recommending a range. Mm -hmm. Dispute resolution. This becomes really important at this point because whether the seller is paying the buyer's brokerage or the seller's brokerage is paying the buyer's brokerage, we still have to be able to collect from the seller, whatever is our portion. And the way that it works is you know, mediation is definitely a means that's available to our customers and ourselves. It is available through our board. It is available at a little to no cost whatsoever. It's everybody sitting down to talk about it. But in most cases, when there's a dispute over money, the form of media, the form of resolve is called arbitration. So we do want this paragraph uh, acknowledged because should we have to go down that route, uh, we want to have that option to ensure that we're able to uh, be compensated. Now, I will tell you the way that the way that we have dealt with it in most cases is if there's a problem, it's usually a consultation between the agent and the brokerage to determine whether we believe it is necessary to go down that road. Um, so know that it's not that we're just running out there trying to figure ways to, to get money in. It's were we adequately compensated? Were you adequately compensated? Were the expenses covered? Does this make sense? What's the situation? So it would be before we did anything this, this severe, this level, we would always want to have a consultation with the agent. So, but we do want this completed to at least give us the option should we find that need part of this. Miscellaneous, this agreement is binding on the sellers and brokers, heirs, personal representatives, administrators, successors, and signs. The broker may assign this agreement to another listing office. Now, this agreement is the entire agreement between the seller and the broker. No prior or present agreements or representations will be binding on seller or broker unless included in this agreement. Electronic signatures are acceptable and will be binding. Signatures, initials, and modifications communicated by facsimile will be considered as originals. The term buyer, as used in this agreement, includes buyer, tenants, exchangers, optionees, and other categories of potential or actual transferees. Then we go into additional terms. Are there any additional terms? This would be exclusions. This would be any other terms or conditions that you want to or you want to make sure. Uh, automatic price reductions, um, any of those kinds of things. We go into paragraph fifteen. Again. You are our authorized associate, so you have the right to initial at the bottom of each page, along with the seller, then the seller's signature or seller's signatures, your signature, our firm, the office. And we do need to identify, this has been missed a lot lately, copy returned to seller on email, by email, facsimile mail, if you are emailing it. They should get a copy. If you're doing this through app files, they should get a copy once everything's executed. However, we do need you to fill this in about when that occurred. That does set the time clock to start. So was it via email, fax, or mail? If you sent it through app files, you would put the date that they received it through app files. If you sent it directly via email um, or mail, oh heavens, um, or personal delivery. There you go, personal delivery. Service with a smile. All right. 
So that's five pages. I went from four to five pages, just a couple of additions. Questions, things we want to talk about. Ooh, that's dead air, concerned. <laughs> Uh, I'll jump in. Okay, go. Okay, so through the listing agreement, we are determining what what amount the seller is going to contribute for our compensation and potentially the buyer's agent compensation. When an agent submits to a list agent a purchase and sale agreement, I have no idea how the mechanics of working out the compensation, not on that. And it would be so very helpful, I think, to play out option A, option B, option C, and this is how it would play out. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Is there any role playing? <laughs> Yeah, that's so. Unfortunately, for you, unfortunately, that's on the the thirteenth. Gotcha. It, sorry, the yeah, the thirteenth. Our next business meeting. That's why we extended it. I see. It's part of what we want to do is I'm trying to get questions and then plant those questions and then try and have scenarios that we can run through and that we can hear how other people would address that. Maybe make help people with words or terminology flow charts you have a flow chart that you did one day and i wish that was um available to everybody and i didn't take a photo of it where if the seller chooses to pay the buy buyer's broker this 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 if the seller chooses to pay the list broker this, if the list broker is paying the buyer's broker and the assorted forms under each. And um, honest to God, I'm terrified to get an offer because I don't even understand. Um, yeah. I find it remarkable that we're supposed to adjust to this in two weeks. And if we have current listings, we still don't have the forms to adjust them to the new requirements. Well, There's okay, so okay, so you're bringing up a lot of good, a lot of good points. So I, I think that practicing is good. I, I want to. I'm hoping that what we can do is because we've tried to make sure that there's opportunities for everybody to talk about these things, to talk about some of these changes. Really. I mean, when you get an offer, great. Don't be worried about getting an offer. When you get an offer, see what's there and then either call me and we'll go through all of it or that before you get in front of the seller or I'll go with you to the seller so that we can kind of explain what, what each piece is. Because I think we're all going to be learning. So there are going to be some agents that we're going to have to go back to and say, hey, look, you've asked for something, but there's no accompanying support. Can you please share with us the, the compensation agreement, or we don't even need to do that. We can create all the pieces. And I think that's what we're gonna end up having to do, unfortunately, is you guys are investing the time to understand how this process works. And, and regarding the flow chart, I don't remember, maybe I kept a copy of it, I don't know if I did, but I'll try and create one so that there's something that, that helps people kind of imagine or, or visually lay out what some of the different aspects are. But um, we can do everything. We, we can do it. So if we don't get what we need from the other side, all these forms allow us to create the support for it. So all if, if I don't get the compensation agreement from the buyer's associate, I'm definitely going to put one together. And that's going to go back to them with, with our counter or with more information. Um, you know, we're, we, can, we can work through those, those different steps. But um, yeah, I think the idea of role playing is great. I think more than one person has asked about it. Uh, and that's why we extended the business meeting on the 13th was to give people an opportunity to have a chance to, to try and find their own words. Um, 
Holly's going to say it one way. Anthony's going to say it one way. I'm going to say it one way. Karen's going to say it one way. And that's great. But if we can kind of get some ideas of structure, you can kind of um, apply your own language to it. So I, I think it's a great suggestion, Karen. We hope to be able to do that on the 13th. Um, and again, that meeting, I realize some of you may not be able to make that meeting. So uh, it will be available Zoom uh, and most likely will be uh, recorded also. But thanks for thanks for those comments. Appreciate it. Well, honestly, I think with all of us realtors being in the same position, I think we're going to help one another out in the first couple of months. So, um, you know, if we make a mistake, I think the other realtor is going to help us. If they make a mistake, I think we can help them. So I think, you know, for the first couple of months, everyone's in the same boat. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's I think that's true. Uh, my biggest fear in, is for you with the people on the other side because I've unfortunately heard a lot that there there are a lot of brokerages that aren't trying to share some of this information um, with their agents. So yeah, I think you're right. I think we're all going to have to have grace, but I I think I'm I'm concerned that a lot of it's going to fall to you guys to help the other people because you guys have taken the time to understand and invest and acknowledge what's happening so on that <laughs> note clark yes ma'am um i've actually had some pushback on filling out the compensation agreement because it's not quote unquote required yet so in that instant um can i call you or audrey to to speak to the other agent or their broker to me. help me out <laughs> all you have to do is call me yeah okay there's no call me and I'm happy to make a phone call that there should be no reason, yeah. especially right now should be the best time that people are willing to work with those compensation. Um, I would agree. You know, let's, let's Is that on the buyer side? S -S 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 she was, she was submitting one as part of her offer and they were pushed or were you asking for one? Was it your listing? Um, this was, uh, we were on the buyer side, the sub, the listing agent. She submitted one and they were like, it's not necessary. We don't need that. We yeah. Don't need and the, well, actually, and she owns the, she's the broker owner as well. Um, but she was, she was nice. She eventually signed it, but she was saying it wasn't required. So. Yeah. Anyways. Okay. Is, sorry. I'm going to mute myself. <laughs> you're fine. You're fine. She's right. It's not required currently. I think it's now is the time to be using the forms to yeah. practice so that when it's required, it's not, it's not a shocker. Anyway. Anybody else? Can't thank you guys enough. I really appreciate you doing all this, taking time. Any, any comments? I'm looking through trying to see everybody who's here and see if there's any comments or- Well, I have one. Yeah. My comment is the listing, the listings that we have that we're going to have to okay, modify. So there we go. So here's here's what it will be. It will not be a, it will not be a modification. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. It'll be a disclosure that goes that you'll need to take to each of your current sellers or to share with each of your current sellers that will allow that allow you to share with them that this is now occurred right. there that their compensation they've offered the buyers brokers is now out of mls and they have some options i've seen i'm sure some of you are seeing copies of them that have been on social media i've seen a couple we will not be using one from another brokerage but if you've seen one that you like and that you feel is is good at explaining what's happening and and will help the seller not scare the seller and you feel is a tool for you share it with me and then and we'll have something for you and again i know that we're two weeks on this please know i have been working on policies and procedures to ensure that they're there for you we haven't released them just because of the changes at this point we feel a little more comfortable finalizing some policies and procedures now that we have the listing agreement and these other modification forms so our goal is to definitely get that out to you um, before uh, before the 17th um, so that you have a chance to review them. Missy, go ahead. So I've already been having conversation with my sellers that 
that a new listing agreement is coming out because of the changes that are coming forth and that they would they'll need to either sign a modification to the listing agreement or perhaps even just a redone listing agreement because I wasn't sure because we didn't have procedures yet. Yeah. And they're all okay with that either or. Right. So is there any reason why we can't just do a new listing agreement? Initially, I didn't think there would be. Um, what I heard from uh, on one call uh, with Joanna Watkins was to not redo a listing agreement to ensure the integrity of the listing agreement. Now, if you want to do it and extend it, I suppose it would be fine. I'm not opposed to redoing the listing agreement, but the the modification or disclosure will basically be these three paragraphs, the eight, nine, and 10, just acknowledging, allowing them to acknowledge how they would like to move forward with buyer compensation. Okay, so there's not, we don't have one of those yet. No, there's, there's, I've seen, you know, I've only seen two. Florida Realtors was supposed to be coming out with one. I have not seen that yet. Okay. So I'm trying to but get you, something to get out to you. Okay. But you said that we would not be using the Florida Realtor form. I'm sorry. Not using which Florida Realtor form? The modification or disclosure or whatever. No, no, no. I said we're not, I'm not, we're not going to use another brokerages form. Oh, okay. I thought you said. I'm sorry if I misspoke. No, that's okay. I we will just... not be using another brokerages form, but if you have seen things that are out there floating around because there's things on TikTok, there's things on Facebook, there's things, there's these forms that are flying around all sorts of places out there. If you've seen one that you think, oh, I could, this, I could, I could buy into this, send it to me so that we can incorporate it into what we're going to offer out or that we will offer out the Florida Realtor one. I just don't want to wait much longer on it. Okay. All right. Got it. Thanks. Yeah, of course. And um, Ray, I thought had his hand up, but is, are you good, Ray? Okay. Anybody else? Uh, um, one quick question. That form that sure. you all sent a couple of days ago that you want us to fill out with all of our training, did yes. it have to be the exact date? Because I know what trainings I went. I just don't remember what date the Zoom calls were. Just, yeah, just rough estimates. If you have, or you can look back at the, if they were our Zoom calls, you can look back at the App Files calendar or just rough estimates of dates. It can be internal or external stuff. We're trying to get an idea of what you've all been exposed to. Trying so that we can try and set some training for after the 17th. Um, uh, and, watch it, uh, and watching TikTok videos don't count. I'm sorry? Watching TikTok videos don't count. Um, well, okay. I'm going to say no on that one. <laughs> but thanks for trying. <laughs> okay. Anybody else? Okay. I if have we're a all question. Good, Yes. I have just one question. So you said that there was a seller packet um, on our app files. And yes. And I'm not seeing it. So where uh, where is it? There are listing packets and there are buyer packets on app files. It's um, not coming up for me. I don't know where you're at. I see a, I see an agent test files listing and agent test file sale. No, um, if you you would have to create a folder first. Okay. Uh, you would have to create your app file. So let me. So I can do a fake. I'll just do a fake. Fake person. I'm, I'm sorry. So I can get them. So I'll just do a fake seller. Um, so I can get them. Yeah, yeah. Correct. You can do. You can okay. do a fake. You can do a test file. I'll test. Yeah. And access them, <laughs> but I think that. Okay. Um, I think that I'm trying to think. Shouldn't they all form trying to see that but the packages would not be if you're looking for a package, it's different than all forms. Right. So if you're yeah. in app files, uh-huh. If you're in app files, you would need to create a um, test. Well, you would need it would either be you would either be creating a test one for yourself 
or you would be creating um, one for a client. Yeah, so you would be creating for a client or for yourself. And um, let me just show everybody where they're at just so that we're all on the same page. Um, if I'm in a customer file that I've started mm -hmm. and I add forms, if I click on select a form package, all of the different okay. packages are here. Yeah, I just, I would think that you should be able to get to that without having to open a new file, but okay. Well, there would be no reason to get to a package if you weren't starting a file. Well, if you're trying to look at forms, it. there would be. <laughs> so uh, that's fine. I'll just set up a test file. No yeah. big deal. Yeah. Okay. We can do that. Yeah, you can set it up as a as a test file. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank All you. Right. Yeah. That's the easy way to do. Sure. I mean that we can actually apply all the different pieces, the importing and stuff. All right. Well, if, tell Karen I'm going to write an offer on one of her listings as a test and send it to her. There you go. Karen, <laughs> Holly's going to write a, a test offer on one of your listings. I think that's a great plan, Holly. Thank you. <laughs> I think it's a great idea, too. I mean, I to. call another agent and say, write me an offer. All right. Or I'm writing you an offer. I'm sending you an offer. So, like you just, Karen, I just thought it'd be a neat thing to try. And she, she's gone. No, she, I'm not gone. I couldn't click unmute fast enough. <laughs> I'm excited to practice getting offers. I just right. am terrified to get a real one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording since we kind of moved on a little bit. And.